What are you looking at right now? A screen? An image? A bunch of pixels? But what if I told you it was much more? Everything you're about to see could be a game of mine too, bro. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Bot. But, uh, this is an interview for McDonald's. You didn't have to make a presentation on, uh, computer screens. Confused about that intro? Me too. Basically, a few months ago, I was playing around with Minesweeper for a video where I made a functioning calculator out of Minesweeper. Highly recommend you watch that after this. When I realized that when you have one mine next to a square, you see the number one. I know, revolutionary. Two mines, you see the number two. And three mines, you guessed it, you get the color red. Not really, but one is blue, two is green, and three is red. Red, green, and blue or RGB, like a screen. So, I realized that, theoretically, you can make a game of Minesweeper so that if you zoomed out, it would look like an image. So I did that, and added animation, and made it so that it reads Minesweeper save files rather than MP4 or any practical file type. Let me explain how. The first thing we have to do is understand how a normal screen or a Minesweeper game that only have access to three colors can make any color and any image. The basic idea is that you can make any visible color out of varying amounts of red, green, and blue. Which we know for a fact, because our eyes only have red, green, and blue receptors. A screen can't actually mix colors, but it can place them so close together, your brain mixes it for you. So, by making some pixels brighter and others weaker, we can make any color. Minesweeper can't do that. A space is revealed or not. But by considering a larger conglomerate of spaces one pixel, we can change the amount of revealed numbered colors to fake brightness. As a matter of fact, this simple design would work. But the ratio of useful spaces, spaces with numbers, to useless spaces, hidden and flag spaces, is very low. 1 to 8. <coughs> Still more than my ratio of sub to unsubbed. Which means that any image we make will look very dark and unsaturated. A much better design is this. By reusing landmines as much as possible, we can improve the ratio to about 2 to 3. But if we ignore the urge to keep pixels neat and distinguishable, we can make this. It has a ratio of 3 to 2, meaning the majority of the spaces are useful. And we can just let the computer figure out what spaces correspond to each pixel. It's important to mention that this is far from perfect since pixels are being wasted depending on what color we want to make, as you can see with pure colors. If you want me to try to make a program that gets close to the theoretical maximum ratio of 8 to 1, let me know and I'll make another video on that. The next thing I did was reprogram the entirety of Minesweeper. This is for a couple reasons. First is so that I can have my program directly change to the save file of the game. Second is so that it can cycle through games quickly, so that I can turn images into animations, which you'll see later in the video. But most importantly, so that I can make it in dark mode. Dark mode, dark mode, dark mode. This actually has nothing to do with personal preference or because my sleep schedule is so messed up my eyes can't deal with light but because there shouldn't be anything on the screen other than red, green, and blue numbers. If we want white, we'll just mix all three colors like I explained previously. Unfortunately, recreating the entirety of Minesweeper isn't as easy as JUST DO IT! You see, I was having problems with zero spread. Zero spread was the mechanic whereby if you reveal a spot with zero on it, meaning there's no mines next to it, it'll automatically reveal all those mines, since you know they're safe. And if those spaces are zero, the process repeats. But for me, it was starting to look like a bug, not a feature. To see what's going on, I have to explain recursion. Recursion is a strategy programmers use to program less. Rather than try to figure out where the spread is supposed to stop, we concentrate on the spaces right next to ours. And then, we tell those spaces to pretend like they're the original space. And the process repeats. The problem with recursion is that if you're not careful, it'll make a for loop where all the landmines keep checking themselves because the landmine next to them told them to. This is all very simplified, but you get the idea. 
So what did I do wrong? Well, I wasted a couple hours until I realized the problem was coming from a totally different part of the code. But hey, at least now you know recursion and why these projects take a while to make. Okay, it's done. The UI looks like it was intended for Battleship, but like if we had Battleship at home, it's okay though because these games are more to look at than play. Now we have to implement the code that turns images into Minesweeper games. The first thing the code does is build a save file of the right dimensions with this pattern. Then it looks at the individual pixels in the image, it reads the red, green, and blue values, which are always something between 0 and 225, and then uses this equation to figure out how many numbers of each color it has to hide. And that should work. It's surprising how easy things are with the proper prep. W what's that? It doesn't work? Firstly, I forgot to implement the zooming in and out, so I did that. But then the quality was too low, so I upgraded that. But then the zoom wasn't good enough, so I improved that. And then I had to adjust a bunch of other things, like the zoom. Or how images looked better if they didn't use the same blue as screen views, which doesn't really make sense. And finally, I upgraded the zoom. And there it is. Especially if you take a step back, you can see how we're able to replicate all the colors in the sample images. And so, I rendered some stuff, and here are the results. It's important to mention that I could easily improve the quality so much that my physical screen is a limitation, but then you wouldn't be able to tell it's a game of Minesweeper at all. I found this was the most I could do while still being able to recognize individual spaces. Hopefully, YouTube compression doesn't break that. So next is adding animation. Being honest, animation, from a programming perspective, is very boring. It's just showing an image, waiting a bit, and showing another image. That's why I also decided to implement using Minesweeper games as save files for whole Minesweeper animations. At first, it feels like a Minesweeper game should only be able to save the information of itself. It sounds like a paradox otherwise, but it turns out we can save a lot more than that. First, if we use the starting spaces to encode how big the games in the animation are going to be, we don't have to waste space writing where the mines go, because they always appear in the same pattern. Then, it feels like we would have to make spaces in the save file correspond to spaces in the game, then hide or reveal them depending on what's in the image. But we can do better. We don't really care about what colored spaces are revealed, we just care that it's the right amount of each color. So instead of saving the spaces, we can save the amounts. This is very efficient, for the same reason binary is very efficient. But the final space saver is the most interesting. I'm going to be simplifying a week-long information theory course I took into one minute, so take this with a grain of salt, because it's going to be oversimplified to say the least. Normally, if you wanted to store a number between 0 and 7, you would need three binary digits, with every combination of those digits corresponding to a number between 0 and 7. But what if we were to do something like this? It would still work, but it's clearly worse, since on average we use more digits. Unless it's not. The average being better only means it's a better storage system if we expect all the digits to be selected at random. An example to make this somewhat understandable is to imagine the same situation, but 90% of the time we're storing the number 0. Because 0 is so common, we want to make its storage space as small as possible, even if it means sacrificing the space of other digits. That's why, if we more or less know what we should expect, using stranger patterns like these can actually be better. As a final touch, we store all of this information in base 4 rather than binary, because there's four possible things that could be in any space, and we end up that a game this size can store the information of a game this size. Finally, I decided to render an animation of our little bamboo friend in a more fitting background. So please, literally take a step back, relax, and enjoy.